Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning, church? Amen. If you're blessed, clap your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So tell you, it's the last time that we'll see that we saw Brother Sister Erdalin uh, led the praise and worship. Because she will be going home for good in the Philippines next week. Amen. And we will miss her. Because for a long time, he was serving the Lord for as a worship leader in this church. Not only in this church, but also in the church before in uh, ACM and if, uh, church before that. So church, this morning, are you ready to listen to the Word of God? Yeah. Amen. So be attentive because we have a brand new, <laughs> exported, <laughs> imported, I mean, speaker. And before we will, I will cross him to you, I would like to say something about Pastor Mark. Uh, Pastor Mark uh, is a current senior pastor of uh, Jesus is Alive ministry or church in the whole United Arab Emirates. He's a senior pastor. Also, he started in the UAE. And they have branches in, I think, in seven Emirates already, Pastor. Yeah, they have uh, branches in seven Emirates. And uh, uh, he's also a member of the 10 O, which is the Tribal Nation Outreach. And I believe he will be giving to you some of the you know, information about this course, the Mission uh, Tribals and M Mission Academy. And uh, he's been uh, serving the Lord for a long, long years. And as you can see, him still be very young until now. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, church, please uh, prepare your hearts and minds to welcome our guest speaker this morning, Pastor Mark Vidiga. Thank you, Pastor Juice. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Shall we all rise up and let us welcome the presence of the living God? Hallelujah. Father in heaven, we thank you. We glorify your holy name. Amen. This morning, O oh Lord God, we pray, saturate this place with your holy presence. Yes, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit move freely upon the hearts of everyone. Amen. Never allow anyone, O oh Lord, to leave this place without receiving your blessing, yes, your press revelation. Yes, Father, we thank you for everyone who are here this morning. I just pray, O oh Lord God, open up our hearts our spirits, and our minds, O oh Lord, so that we may understand your words. Yes, Father, we thank you that today there will be miracles, there will be signs and wonders, O yes, Lord God. Lord. There will be hearts who are receptive to your words. Yes, there will be transformation of yes, lives, O oh Lord God. Amen. And Father, I just commit to you myself this morning, O oh Lord God. Let your mind, O oh Lord, alone be lifted up. Let your hearts alone be known, O God, and let your name alone be lifted up in our midst. We thank you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity to minister to you this morning. Thank you for the invitation of Pastor Jules. And I thank also this congregation for you have been a part of the ministry of the TNO. You sent some of your members as a student last class two. And after my preaching, uh, I asked permission from Pastor Jules to, if I can present at least what is all about Times and Nations Outreach Missions Academy. It is actually a Bible school uh, brought here by Times and Nations Outreach here in the UAE for the equipping of every pastors, church leaders, and workers. Now, open with me your Bible if you have your Bible in the book of Acts. Today, this morning, I would like to share to you one of the foundational teachings on how our church will be able to sustain, multiply, and go even farther and beyond our limits and capacity. Would you like that to happen in this church? Amen. 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 Now, we all know in the book of Acts from the Bible that the early church started 
in prayer. Amen? Amen. I also believe with all my heart that when you started this church, most of your key leaders now, they kneel down in prayer before the Lord. Amen. Especially Pastor Jules. Amen? Amen. And later on, you join him kneeling down before the Lord just to reach out more and more souls in this part of Abu Dhabi. Amen? And the Lord established this church. And I believe in my heart that the Lord will also multiply and expand this church or throughout Abu Dhabi and even far beyond Abu Dhabi. Amen? Amen! Amen! Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me give you one uh, example before I give my message because as far as I remember when we started our church also in Dubai it all started in prayer and there is one key word that the Lord has given me and that is the Arabic word for prayer what is that? Do you know the Arabic Salah. word for prayer? Salah. Salah. Salah you know how it happened? It was during our wedding anniversary when we launched the first small group. It's only a small gathering in my villa in Dubai. And I took the opportunity to invite all my friends at the time that was 2006. I told them it's our wedding anniversary. Would you like to come and be our visitor, be our guest? Especially if there is, if there is eating, you know, it's not... Uh, it's that so simple and easy to invite friends and people and that was the start actually. So I took the opportunity of celebrating our anniversary, wedding anniversary, to invite people and that was the start of the first small group meeting in our, in our villa. But the problem is, what is next after that? Actually, I was staying in a very exclusive subdivision or place or area in Dubai at that time. Uh, maybe some of you knows the area, it, it was in Miss Hart, just opposite of Murdy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if some of you knows about it. It's a very exclusive area where most of the prominent people live in Dubai, you know, from no. Dubai. You know? So just like me, <laughs> because I'm the son of the living God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the son of the King of Kings. Yeah. So it's a privilege. And all of you, we are all privileged. Yeah. Amen! Yeah. You should believe that because we have a special favor in the sight of God. Yeah. If you are a believer, you have a special favor. Yeah. Going back to my story, the problem is when all the people started to leave because the celebration is over, some of them told me, Brother, Kuya Mark, they called me Kuya Mark. We should have another meeting by next week asking permission for an anniversary is so easy because you know the owner of my villa maybe you would not believe is the cousin of the ruler of Dubai and that villa is untouchable untouchable that's why I was able to start a fellowship later on I will tell you more about it you know the Lord gave me a keyword and what is that key word? Salah. Salah. No? When I was praying, I was kneeling down before the Lord. Lord, how can we have another meeting? They're requesting. And suddenly the Lord gave me a fresh revelation. Use the word Salah. Immediately I approached the owner, the wife, the owner <laughs> no, of the villa, and no. immediately I told her, Madam. Can I invite again all my friends? Why? We want to do Salah. Wow. <laughs> really? You will do Salah? Yes, madam. <laughs> okay, pray for me, huh? Pray for me. Invite your friends and pray. Yes, definitely. We will pray for you. We will pray for Baba. We will pray for UAE. And we will pray for the people of UAE. Amen. And she agreed to bring my friends the second time around. And that was the start. A small group meeting in my villa. Later on, I will tell you more. Now, the early church also started with what? 
Prayer. They were numbering around how many? Around 120 of them. They were praying in the upper room because everyone is engulfed with fear after Jesus Christ ascended in heaven. That was the scenario. If you know the whole book of Acts, and let us open our Bible in the book of Acts chapter 1. In the book of chapter 1 of Acts, let's jump to verse 12. I will not read and tell more, but I'll just give you some background time to time about the book. The book. In verse 12 of the book of Acts, Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, the twelve disciples. Let's jump to verse 14. Listen carefully in verse 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer. They all joined together constantly in prayer alone with the woman and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. What will make the people of God or let us just say different denominations, what will make them to unite? in one common activity. It is true? Prayer. Prayer. It is very, very difficult to bring all the denominations, all the people, different churches, if you have one particular agenda. But you can be able only to unite people of God through prayer. The same thing that these people in the early church, they gathered together. They were numbering around 120 of them. And they gathered in the upper room praying. And this was the word of the early church. Amen? Amen. Now I believe here in Abu Dhabi there are also different groups. They are uniting the body of Christ through prayer. The same thing in Dubai. We have different groups. We have the Emirates Prayer Alliance. We have the Regional Transformation Network. I don't know here, I'm not yet familiar in Abu Dhabi, but in Dubai, there are so many. We have Highway 19. I don't know if some of you knows, no? Or maybe some of you encountered and attended these prayer groups. But when there will, there will be activities about prayer, it was the time that you can unite them. Most of them, they will come without any color, without any denominations, without any divisions, without any barriers. Now, one thing that will unite the people of God is through prayer. Now, today, this morning, I would like to share to you at least four to five, depending on my time, if you will allow me, at least four to five good qualities, at least, that you can see for a healthy church. They want this church to be a healthy church. Amen. 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 Then the first quality that I would like to share to you is prayer. Amen. This Amen. church, this church must start in prayer. This church must end in prayer. This church must continue in prayer. This church must remain a praying church. Amen. If you want this church to expand, if you want this church to multiply, if you want this church to be a healthy church, then you should kneel down all together in prayer before the Lord. Amen. Because through prayer, you can receive fresh revelation. Amen. Through prayer, you can be able to overcome every trials, every problems, everything. You will be able to overcome through prayer. Amen. Amen. And it was also through prayer that you received the burden. What will make someone to pray before the Lord the moment you receive that great burden? When there is a burden in your heart translated into prayer, then there will be great result. Amen. Believe me. One example of that is Nehemiah. 
In the book of Nehemiah, if you remember prophet Nehemiah in chapter 1 and chapter 2 of the book of Nehemiah, I will not go through details, but I will just give you the story. In chapter 1, the book of Nehemiah, if you will remember, he received some bad news that was during the month of his death. Just go through the book, chapter 1 of Nehemiah. In chapter 1, Nehemiah received one bad news. And what was this bad news? Let's jump to verse 3. The bad news he received is this. Because somebody visited him. Okay? And gave this report. They said to me, Nehemiah is talking. Those who survived the exile and are back in province are in what? Go to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Nehemiah is talking about the remnants of Israel because most of them were scattered and went into exile in Babylon. <laughs> and there were few Israelites who left and survived the onslaught of the enemies in Jerusalem. And the report that Nehemiah received is this. What happened to those people who survived <coughs> in Jerusalem? They were in what? Great trouble. What else? They are in disgrace. In verse 3, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. Hallelujah. This was the bad news. And what was the response of Nehemiah? I'm giving you one example in the life of Nehemiah. What will make the question is what will make somebody to kneel down before the Lord in prayer? There must be great burden. You bang kabigatan. And the burden that Nehemiah received because he was longing to be back one day in Jerusalem and to reveal the wall of Jerusalem. And this was the right timing. Upon receiving the bad news, what was his response? How about you? If there is a bad news, if there is a need to pray for something, you must develop that great burden. And what will make you kneel down before the Lord? The burden. Yung kabigatan. And this was the experience of Nehemiah. What happened? What was his response? In verse 4, When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. Sat down means, basta lang ba siya naupo? Naupo lang? No! He did something. In fact, he was crying. He wept and prayed before the Lord God of heaven. If you receive some bad news or problems or issues, anything, what will be your first reaction? You should kneel down before the Lord in prayer. Amen. But you will not be able to kneel down before the Lord if there is no great burden. And the burden is the people in Jerusalem are in ruins, <coughs> are in disgrace. They are in constant attack of the enemy. And the wall of Jerusalem is broken down with fire. This was the bad news. Now if you want resort in everything, in your ministry, in this church, you must kneel down before the Lord in prayer. Amen. This must be your first reaction. Hindi yung pag may narisip ka, Uy, alam mo ba yung nangyari kay ganito? Ha? Pinagchismisan na. Yung English na 
manalangin sa Panginoon. This must be our perception. The same thing that the early church did because what was the problem of the early church at the time? They lost their leader. Jesus Christ ascended into heaven and nobody is taking the lead. Jesus is nowhere physically and all the disciples are engulfed with fear. Puno ng takot. And what will you do in this kind of situation? They gathered together in prayer. Amen? Amen? And take note, when Nehemiah started his prayer, it was during the month of Kislev. That is the Jewish calendar. It is a Jewish calendar. Now take note of that because I will go back to that. Let's go back to our reference in the book of Acts. Now what happened? When they prayed, numbering around how many are they when they were praying? They were 120, that is in verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. So 120 were gathered praying together for the church. What will happen for the future of the church? What are they going to do? Because there are so many problems they are facing. Everyone is in fear. Now, let's jump to verse 14. Of chapter 2. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. What was Peter needs to explain? Something happened when they were praying. What happened? If you read the whole story of the book of Acts, something happened when they were praying. Now, when you pray, when a church is praying, something will happen. And what was that? They experienced the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Where in fact, most of the people who were there were saying that they are drunk. Malasin yan. Itang alin ka pag naglalasin. Itang alin ka pag. No? No, it's not. That's why Peter stood up and tried to explain what was happening because everyone has experienced the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and fear has gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Matanggal ang takot. Nawala ang takot ng mga nilbro. And Peter, what do you believe? Peter would deny Jesus how many times? Three times. Peter... What was the nature of Peter, by the way? Peter, who is very bold, hot tempered. Ano pa? What else? Proud. Proud, mayabang. There is one more thing that you should know about Peter. What else? Come on, help me. <laughs> help me. Don't you know that Peter is also an school? He's a fisherman? Yes. And at the same time, he is an school. When we say an school, what is that? Master's degree? 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 Sabi nga, some people in the Philippines, they were saying, Great one lang ang inabot ko. No read, no write pa ko. But Peter is also unschooled. Now if you who are here seated today this morning, you reach at least high school education or college education, but I believe most of us reach college education. 
we are all highly educated, therefore, you are more than Peter. Amen? Amen. Amen. You can do more than what Peter can do. Amen. 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 Now, what did Peter do? Ano ba ginawa ni Peter? Then Peter, in verse 14, he stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Hallelujah. An unschooled disciple of Christ addressing the crowd. And we say crowd, how many? Too much. <laughs> Hallelujah. Therefore, if you are more than Peter, you can stood in front of millions of people. Hallelujah. You can stand and declare the word of God no matter who the audience are. Amen. And you are capable to do it. The only key that you must experience because something happened to Peter. Something happened to the disciples and what was that? Then he experienced the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that gives them boldness, that gives Peter the boldness to stand in front of the people. Amen. Hallelujah! That makes Peter more bold, authoritative, and confident because he has the power of the living God Amen. through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And he addressed the crowd. Now let's jump in verse 42. Of chapter 2. This is the second quality that I would like to give an emphasis. If you want your church, first, this church must start in prayer. Prayer. Don't dedicate only one day for prayer. I don't know if you have a special day of prayer wherein all the members congregate and gather praying together. But you have to do this. Not just one day, but the Bible says they constantly pray without ceasing. You can always pray. You can always be in the mood or in the attitude of prayer because prayer is a heart attitude. It is not only enough that you allocated and attended one day in prayer because you are allotted one day in a week to pray together, but you, every one of us, must be always in the attitude of prayer. Just like what the early church has done. What they did. They devoted themselves in verse 42 to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, to what? Prayer. They just recently prayed. They gathered together, they constantly prayed, and still they continued in prayer. A healthy church never stops praying together. Amen. Amen. A healthy church continue in prayer. This is the second one, you must continue to pray without ceasing. If you want your church to be healthy, you must continue. I'll give you one example. Don't you know that when you pray, when you pray, something happens. Something one time, well, our service is almost end. It's almost over. That was sometime in 2009. Then suddenly, the Lord impressed in my heart, praying for that person. When I look to the person, it's a young lady with crutches in her hands. She attended, the whole family attended the service. And yet the Lord told me, pray for that lady. Immediately, I requested all the congregation, please return to your seat. And we will pray for this lady. I called the whole family, I called the lady, 
with crutches in her hands. Then later on, I realized she is about to be to undergo operation requiring at least thirty thousand dirhams because she was not attending anymore the school because of her situation. She cannot go to the school anymore. And we pray, we pray, we pray for that child. At that time, maybe she's around 12 or 13 years old. You know, when you pray, something will happen. Amen. Something will happen. We pray for the child. Pray, 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 pray. We, we release the healing. And after the prayer, it's still the same. It's still the same. She's still wearing the crutches. And she's having difficulty to walk. But believe me, something will happen. After a man... The mother called me. They told me, the mother told me that her child doesn't require anymore to undergo operation. operation. Yes. And she was able to walk. And until now, she never went to the hospital for the required operation. That was 2009. And now she's a member of the dance ministry. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. So when you see something that requires prayer, either healing, problem, difficulties, anxieties, anything, don't waste your time. Don't wait for Pastor Jews. Especially if you are in a small group meeting. Now, if you are in a small group, oh, somebody brought willing to be used as a living vessel of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your most precious name, this is our prayer. And everybody says, Amen. Yeah.